If you're interested in improving the world, watch this video. So I'm going to explain what a worker co-op is in this video, but I'm going to do it in layman's terms. So it's really, really easy to understand. So I'm not going to get into no, little, little details. So what's a worker cooperative, also called worker co-op? Not to be confused with business cooperatives, which I'll explain later. Uh, in my opinion, that uh, worker cooperatives is the future of work. So here we go. So what is a worker cooperative? So a worker cooperative is a business that is completely owned and democratically run by all of its employees. Boom! Let's look at this chart. Worker cooperative. This is decentralized power because all the power is at the bottom. It's divided evenly amongst all the employees. CEO, supervisors, boss, they all have the same power. One vote. So all the power is at the bottom and then they decide what to do. At the top, the CEO has no extra power. He has as much power as everybody else. So all the power is at the bottom, and that's why it's called decentralized power. Another way for saying decentralized power is democracy, in my opinion. Now, when I say the employees vote on everything, it doesn't mean they're going to make decisions that the CEO would make. The CEO has a job. The managers have a job to do. The CEO, you know, he's going to maybe trying to get the best price on products that they have to order, making new contracts with people to get parts in so they can make whatever they're making. You know, CEO does what the CEO does. So the employees don't really vote on those things. They vote on everything that affects them, right? Their salary, vacation time, when they come in, you know, all that stuff. So of course, in a worker cooperative, it's there's still the CEO, there's still the manager, except they don't have extra power over you. If you watch my Wisdom of Crowds video, it scientifically proves that that's what we want. That's what we need in the workplace. Better chance at succeeding. We need everybody to make decisions. And if you want to know more about the wisdom of crowds effect, check my video. I'm going to post a link below. Watch it. It's really good to know. All right. Some facts about worker co-ops. Less than one in 36,000 businesses are worker co-ops globally. High job stability meaning you won't get easily fired or laid off. The number one priority, actually, for a co-op is to employ people, not to make profit. Employees hire and fire everyone, including the manager, CEOs, and bosses. Employees find themselves having a level of dignity and quality of life rarely possible through traditional means. Employees vote on everything from salary, vacation time, working hours to hiring and firing of other employees, including the managers and CEOs. Co-ops are becoming more popular around the world and in my opinion is the future of work. So let's say you watch this video and it interests you. You want to know more about uh, worker co-ops. Well, don't just search. If you're, if you're going to do some searching and research, don't search for keyword like co-ops or cooperatives. And the reason why you shouldn't do that is because you're going to get results back from the search engine. Most of it is going to be business cooperatives, not worker cooperatives. So there's a difference. And I'll tell you what it is. So a business co-op is like a credit union. Credit unions are not as evil as banks. Banks and credit unions are not the same thing. It's better to go with a credit union for reasons that I'm not going to list all here. But one thing that I found out about credit unions is if you put money in the bank, Okay, first of all, when you put money in the bank, a regular bank, that money's not yours anymore. You know when you open your account and you sign those terms and agreements, it says that in there. It says that when you hand over the money to us, it's ours. It's not yours anymore. So you have to understand that. Well, same, same thing with a credit union. However, in a bank here in Canada, you're protected. Let's say there's a World War III or this or, a, or the, the bank goes, uh, uh, closes down, goes bankrupt, whatever, whatever. Uh, a, a disaster happens. You're only protected for $100,000 in a bank. So if you have, let's say, and I know most people don't have this, but I'm just saying, if you have 200000 in the bank or three or 400 whatever in the bank, uh, so it doesn't apply to most people, I'm just saying it anyways, that a bank only protects you, the insurance is for $100,000. However, in Canada, for credit unions, it's double than banks. It's $200,000, so you're protected. So if you have $200,000 in a bank and a big global disaster happens, you could lose, you know, you, you're only protected for 100000 
If you put it in a credit union, you're protected up to 200,000. So that's an interesting fact about credit unions here, here in uh, Canada. Besides that, besides that, you have better protection, uh, more, more protection of your money in the, in the account. I did not see over now, it's been about eight years, seven, eight years I'm with credit union and banks. In day-to-day life, day-to-day business banking, I didn't notice no difference with a credit unit and a bank, nothing. So be careful with that word cooperative, uh, you know. I'm trying to tell you cooperatives are better, but not business cooperatives. That's a different thing. So just make sure when you search, you could, you, you, are they talking about business cooperatives or worker cooperatives? Two different things. Okay, so a regular type business, that is all top-down control. Okay, it's just like a king. You know, king, he, he, he has the final word. He says, do this, do this, do this. And other people have to say, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. You have no say in it. So you have a CEO or board of directors, you know, at the top, uh, deciding everything about the business from where, what, when, and how to work. They tell you when to start, where you go to work, what you have to do, and how to produce stuff. You have no say. That's a regular type business. So if a CEO or board of directors have a meeting and they find out that, hey, if we close our business here and move to China, we're going to make more profit, say bye-bye to your job. And you have no say in it. Now, why do you think your underwear is coming from China with everything else? A whole bunch of stuff coming from China, right? And it's true because they pay their workers less there. But people blame China. Like uh, a lot of people blame China. Ah, China's stealing everything. China's stealing our technology. You know, China's, China's doing this, China's doing that. Now, to be fair, and um, the reason why everything's coming from China... <laughs> these days is because business owners, capitalists, the ones that want to make a lot of profit, they made a deal with China. They made a deal with the Chinese government and it goes something like this. Okay. I'm going to paraphrase it. It goes something like this. Hey, U.S. business, come over here to China. We got, open up your business here. We got good infrastructure, got good building, good electricity, and we have cheap workers. If you do your business here, it's going to cost you a fraction to run your business, right? So the the, the profit-hungry, right, capitalists, they're like, hmm, make more profit, right? Cost less means make more profit. Yeah, so they moved to China. They weren't forced to go there. But the deal was this, though. You have to, this is the thing they leave out. The deal was Chinese officials say, come here, start your business here. We've got good building, good infrastructure, cheap workers. However, after so many years, three years, five years, whatever the deal is, we get that technology. We are allowed, we get the machines or we are allowed to use the machines for our own stuff. And, and we are able to, you know, make our own stuff with the technology that you bring here. That was the deal, believe it or not, in most companies that moved to China. That was the deal. So it's not like Chinese is stealing everything. They made a deal with capitalists. Now, do Chinese people or the Chinese government, however you want to say it, do they steal stuff, technology and, you know, cop- copyright stuff and stuff like that? Of course they do. But other countries do that too. <laughs> like tons of countries do that. So you can't single that out to China. So I just wanted to clear that up with... Um, why everything's coming from China. It's because businesses around the world made a deal and said, okay, we're going to go there. Okay, you can have our technology after. And also, capitalists say these weirdest things. They say, worker co-ops are no good. They go bankrupt. And these, they'll point out maybe a business or two here. Look, see, it was a co-op, went bankrupt. Well, guess what? When you look into the statistics, there are per capita, right? The ratio. There's more companies that are capitalistic, standard-type businesses that go bankrupt in co-ops. Don't get fooled by that one. And plus, the science of wisdom of crowds proves that when more people make decisions, the average answer is the best. It's better than experts. It's better than a few people. If you are interested in consciousness, spirituality, extraterrestrials, quantum physics, economics, and much more. 
subscribe now. We discuss all these topics in easy to understand layman's terms. Subscribe now. How was that? We're still rolling. No high school diploma required. So two co-ops worth mentioning. Mondragon in Spain and Ocean Spray, which I didn't know, in the US. So here's some Mondragon facts. It's the world's largest worker cooperative. They employ over 100,000 people. The ratio of the highest paid worker compared to the lowest is 5 to 1. Meaning, let's say the CEO makes the most money, he only gets five times more than the janitor. If the janitor is the lowest paid guy. They make about $25 billion in sales every year. And they man manufacture consumer goods, industrial components and products, and, and uh, systems for constructions and service. A, a lot of stuff. I mean, a wide range of stuff they manufacture. Now, here's some ocean spray facts. They employ over 2,000 people. And this is, I love this part. They fired their CEO in 2020 for violating the company's harassment policy. So I guess that CEO, he probably came from a regular type business, right? CEO. And he was probably, maybe he was good at it and he had a good reputation. So that's why they hired him at Ocean Spray. Like the employees hired him, right? And then he kept doing shit. I guess he was doing his old job. <laughs> And they fired him. The employees said, get the f*** out of here. <laughs> uh, and they, Ocean Spray is the biggest producers of cranberries in the world. Interesting. Now that I explained what co-ops are, now, what's capitalism? I'll use the Wikipedia definition of capitalism because that is what they teach in school. I came across a lot of people in life and they explained to me, no, capitalism means this. No, capitalism means trade and barter. No, capitalism means when you make a deal between someone, whatever. They have, they have like their own explanation. Uh, but today I'm talking about the explanation of Wikipedia, which is, the, which is what they teach actually in school. That's, if, if you're going to learn about capitalism, that's what you teach in school, which is capitalism is an economic system based on the private ownership of the means of production of and their operation for profit. So what that means basically is capitalism is an economic system where a person owns the company, one or a few, own the whole company. And they also make all the decisions of how to produce the stuff and how, how, you know, how to operate the business. So one or a few people are the owners and decide everything. So on a standard business, if they go public, which means they go on the stock market and you can invest in them, 80 to 90% of a stock in a business are owned by very few people. You have to understand this. Even though, you know, at the end of the year, oh, I'm going to avoid paying some tax if I invest, if I invest in my uh, whatever, RSP or, you know, some kind of investment to avoid paying the tax that year, I'm going to invest in this company, right? So you're investing you know, hopefully you make some money. That's the kind of the point. But to think, to, to, to think you have any power, because when you invest in your own shares, you could vote now. You can vote, uh, not much thing, but a lot of the voting is, has to do with who's going to be the new CEO and stuff like that. And there's some other issues that the stockholders can vote, can vote on. However, it works like this. It's one vote per share. So if you have 50 shares or something, or your, your, your grandma died and left you 100 shares in the will, usually there's hundreds of thousands of millions of shares in the company, and all, most of those shares are owned by very few people. So they get to vote hundreds of thousands of times on the same issue. So if they vote on something, they get 100,000 votes, hundreds of thousands, of, if not millions of votes. You you get 100 if you have 100 shares. So 100 votes, let's say, we, you know, you say, I want this guy to be in charge. And everybody else votes. Yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is it's worth shit in terms of controlling the company. You it's basically, you have no say. Also, to continue, the board of directors want to make sure the CEO, right, makes as much profit as possible. 
It's the, it's the number one goal. And it's centralized power. And the ratio of highest paid worker compared to lowest paid worker is usually more than 100 to 1. And often over 300 to 1. So let's just take the 100 to 1. So the CEO makes 100 times more every week, every time, every year, every month, whatever, every time he gets paid than, let's say, the lowest guy. I'll just throw janitors. I hope I'm not insulting any janitors out there, but in a building usually, uh, you know, I don't know what the lowest paid worker is, but I'm just saying janitor. Maybe they're not the lowest paid workers, but whatever. No insult to janitors. Okay, let's compare now a cooperative, a worker cooperative compared to a standard type business, capitalist type business. In a workers co-op, the employee is part owner, make all the decisions and they vote on everything, including salary, vacation time and firing and hiring of the managers and CEO. Get that through your head that you have that power in a cooperative. In a private business, the owner or CEO or board of directors or boss makes all the decisions on everything. Employees vote on nothing. Now, you might say, that's not true because I work at this company and they gave me 100 shares, which is worth shit. And uh, I get to vote on some things, you know, how, you know, that could be true. But for 99.9999% of businesses, that's not true. So I'm talking about most companies. In a workers' co-op, the ratio of the highest paid worker and the lowest paid worker is usually less than 10 to 1. In a private business, the ratio of the highest paid worker compared to the lowest is usually over 100 to 1. In a workers' co-op, the main goal is to keep the company alive and people employed. In a private business, the main goal is to make as much profit as possible. So that, the, the thing about the workers' co-op, the main goal is to keep the company alive and people employed. That, that, that's something new. I, I, I just found out too, and it like blows my mind. That's like the philosophy behind um, worker co-ops, right? It, it's, 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 it's not like, you know, get bigger and bigger and bigger and overtake the world. It's to keep people employed, which is pretty cool. So another thing is this, because I'm critiquing capitalism or making fun of capitalism, whatever, a lot of people are going to point at me and say, you're Chinese communist, Chinese communist there, <laughs> you're a Chinese communist. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Because no, I'm not a Chinese communist. Actually, I'm going to prove it right now that, that, I, that I'm not. And there's a big reason for that, which I'm about to show you. Let's look at for a second... In China, <clears throat> Chinese communist system, the China's government system, okay? It's basically a dictatorship, which you already heard of. So it's top-down control, right? Citizens have no say on things, basically. If you don't like it, you could move out. Yes, you can move out of China if you don't like it. Now, there are some towns that it's almost impossible to do, but the overwhelming majority of the population... Over 95%, they could move out anytime they want, just to let you know. So let's take a look at the chart here. So this is Chinese communism. That's centralized power. There is such thing as democratic communism, but this video is not about that. This is about how it is in China right now. So as you can see, it's centralized power. You got the president or dictator at the top, and then everybody underneath, you know, has less power, less power, less power, less power. And then at the bottom there, as you can see, no power. All the citizens of China, no power. So the lower you go in this, you have no power, and you go up to the top, that's where all the power is. It controls. So you have one guy, you're a few people controlling, well, in China, billions. So now let's look at a regular type business. So this is a standard type business, and that's centralized power at the top you have the ceo board of directors stockholders or owner they're the dictator they tell everybody underneath what to do then they tell them what to do what to do so you're at the top top you have all the power bottom which is the employees no power so you have one or a few people controlling everybody else who knows how big the company is? If the company has 100,000 employees, it controls 100,000. If, if it if has 1,000 employees or 100, then one guy controls 100 employees. If you don't like it, you can quit. That's what that's what the deal is. If you don't like it, you can quit and go to, you know, you, you, you could quit and then work for another dictator. That's basically it. 
Uh, or if you don't like it there, if you don't like the, like the king there, the dictator there, top-down control there, if you don't like that centralized power, you could trade that, swap it for another centralized power. Go work for somebody else. Still the same thing, top-down control, you have no say. Or you could open up your own company and now you're the leader. Yeah, you're the top-down control. You're the dictator. Or you could do that. Or you could have a brain and, you know, morals and ethics and say, you know what? I'm going to start a cooperative, a workers' cooperative. So this is it. This is the thing why I criticize. This is a big, big, big thing why I criticize capitalism. It's not because I'm a Chinese communist. Check this out. Let's compare China and capitalism, both charts. Let's compare them. Hmm. Ta-da. Pretty cool, huh? Also, there is not really, kind of like capitalism, you know, there, there's, there's no really one rule of how to do it, right? You could have like some, some businesses in capitalism have one owner, some have two owners, some have ten, five, ten, you know, there's a share, sometimes it's a family run business and so forth. And there's uh, different variations, you know, there's, it's still top down control, all that, but it's diff there's different variations. Same thing with co-ops, right? So there's co-ops where you're limited in what you can vote at. There's co-ops where, you know, uh, you, you, you can't vote maybe on your salary or vacation time, but you can hire and fire the boss, right? You can vote on who's going to be the new boss and all that. So there's different types of worker cooperatives. The one that's the best is the one that is the most democratic. Like Mondragon. Mondragon, they vote on everything. If you, if you vote on everything, everything, Right? Salary, vacation time, this, that, when to come in, when we should be working, when should the business be open, you know, is it Monday to Friday, Tuesday to Saturday, is it seven days a week, four days a week, all that stuff. You have to be able to vote on all that stuff. It, 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 the, the best co-op is the one that's the most democratic. That's the best co-op. So if you're interested in co-ops, keep that in mind. You don't want to give away power. Why, why would you want to give away power? It completely goes against the signs of wisdom of crowds. You got to have a lot of people. Everybody has equal power. So just thought I'd throw it out there. Different type, There's different types of co-ops, worker cooperatives. So how to start a co-op? So let's say you want to start a co-op and you have, you know, you kind of have to start it. Uh, I would imagine you got to get like a team together first, right? So one guy, let's say a restaurant. So you have this guy, you have this guy, you have the, the cooks and you have, the managers and you have dishwashers on. You got to get your kind of your team together and that team together will get a loan. I mean, if they don't have enough money, they, they, they all got to sign for a loan. Now, when you go to a bank and you say, we're starting a business and uh, it's a cooperatives, there are banks out there. They're going to be like, well, what's this? They're going to find it shady because they don't understand much about business cooperatives. So you have to also be careful with that. Go to the right bank, go to a bank that has some experience lending to worker cooperatives. Or let's say you have a business and you really like this idea. You want you want it to be more fair and, and stuff like that. You want other people's quality of lives to also improve. And you think a co worker co-op is a good idea. And you already own a business, run a business. Well, you could change it into a co-op. First of all, of course, you have to approach all your employees. Are you interested? Are you interested? And they have to understand what a co-op is and learn about it and stuff like that. If they say, okay, we, yes, 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 yes. We, uh, now let's say the business has been going for four or five years or more, whatever, a certain amount of time. And it's, it's, it's successful. You know, it's not, it's not, there's no sign of bankruptcy of anything. And the original owner already put, let's say two, three million dollars in it or whatever out of his own pocket or from, you know, his own money, put it into the business to, 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 to start it up, to get it going. The way you would change that is in the contract of the co-op from the person who, has the, who owned it originally, he's selling it now to the co-op. All you do is you're selling the business to the co-op and in the contract, you have to say, well, you have to pay back this millions of dollars. So the co-op was going to decide with the business, with the contract, you know, what's it going to be per month? How much are you going to pay back of that million dollars per month? You know, the interest rate, blah, 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 all that stuff. So basically, you you switch it from a private business to a cooperatives, and then the, the cooperative, everybody, of course, equally has to pay back that million. So you might have to pay maybe $50 a month, $100 a month, depending on what um, 
business it is and how, how much money is owed and stuff like that, you'd have to pay that every month as part of the business. But you're probably going to make, make more money <laughs> salary-wise. So that extra $50 or $100 you're paying every month or whatever the amount is kind of equals out. So, it, you know, just try to throw it out there. And here's the cool thing. Now, because co-ops, they vote on everything, it's the perfect place to showcase blockchain type technology, decentralized technology. So it would be, uh, you know, you could use either use a blockchain that it exists already, that's very secure, super, the most secure blockchain, which is Bitcoin uh, currently. Uh, or you could use, uh, you know, different types of blockchains. There's ways of doing it that you can vote on issues with technology now on your smartphone. You can actually vote on issues of a co-op, of a cooperative. And it's like 99.999% accurate. You know, no one could change your vote, you know, because first of all, it's not going to be a private ballot. It'll be like, I'm this guy in the company and I vote for this. And it can be verified that it did come from you. Like you can make it, using blockchain technology in a co-op is like the, it goes hand in hand. Now imagine this, imagine that idea of a co-op using blockchain technology to vote on issues. Imagine now a country works like that. Every citizen, there's a there's a, a network set up and every citizen has a app and it's decentralized and open source and all that goodness. And they can vote on any issue they want. And instantly, the, the basically the country is a big co-op and they will, oh, oh, don't jinx it, <laughs> don't jinx it, don't jinx it. Oh, and by the way, I'm uploading more videos than you see on YouTube, just because YouTube keeps censoring me. I got, I got strikes ready, so I got to be very careful what I post here. There's a lot of stuff I would like to say. <laughs> I can't. Well, actually, I do. I have Razor Frequency on other websites. I have it on Odyssey right now and on uh, BitChute. And uh, if you go to raiseyourfrequency.net, you you could find find those links there. So if to find me, so you don't have to search. So just go to raiseyourfrequency.net. And then you will see for, for temporarily, I have three places where I upload videos and YouTube is the one where I op upload the least amount just because I don't want to get strikes because the stuff I talk about, uh, YouTube doesn't like it. And it's, and YouTube is centralized power. <laughs> they control everything. It's not decentralized. Actually, I'm going to make a video one day about that decentralized social media, which is also the future. So I hope you like my presentation that I just did on worker cooperatives, you know, if you like it, share it and subscribe to this channel, wherever you're looking, whether it's on YouTube or wherever, you know, tell, tell, tell your friends, like I'm, I'm, I'm not saying tell your friends about watch this video, you know, my video. I'm just saying, if you, if you're interested in co-ops, talk to your friends about it. Did you know this? And you don't have to, you don't have to uh, refer them to my video, any other good video out there explain co-ops, you know, I'm not doing this to get famous, <laughs> doing this to send that information. That's it. Right? So. That's it for now. Rem and remember, centralized power is cancer to society. Love, light, and healing. So if you're interested in... Uh, <clears throat> if you... <laughs>